For centuries, Venus has seduced stargazers with its glowing beauty. Rising in the twilight sky as the morning star or evening star, it outshines every planet except the moon. Ancient cultures named it after love goddesses. From Earth, it looked serene, bright, smooth, and inviting. But that smoothness was a deception. Even when telescopes grew stronger, astronomers saw nothing but a blank sphere, hidden beneath thick, impenetrable clouds. Unlike the Moon, Mars, or Jupiter, Venus kept her secrets. Some imagined it was cloaked in oceans, or shrouded jungles. Others guessed it was a stormy, tropical world. But no one really knew. That mystery persisted well into the space age. Venus was Earth's twin in size, mass, and position. If Earth could support life, why not Venus too? It wasn't until we finally sent probes to visit and radar to peel back the clouds that we discovered the shocking truth. Venus wasn't Earth's sister. It was something far more alien and far more terrifying. This is what Venus really looks like. If you pointed a telescope at Venus right now, you'd see almost nothing, just a pale, creamy white disk hanging in space. That's because Venus is wrapped in one of the thickest atmospheres in the solar system. So thick, in fact, that visible light can't pass through it. The clouds are made mostly of carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid, forming a permanent, planet-wide blanket that reflects more than 70% of the sunlight that hits it. That's why Venus shines so brightly in our sky, yet we can't see anything beneath that dazzling veil. Unlike Mars or the Moon, where we can spot surface features with telescopes or cameras, Venus remains stubbornly hidden. No mountain ranges, no craters, no valleys, just cloud. Even from space, orbiting satellites with regular cameras are blind to the surface. To reveal what's really there, scientists had to get creative and use a kind of vision beyond human sight. That's where radar and ultraviolet imaging come in. These tools don't rely on visible light. They bounce signals off the planet and build maps based on what comes back. Thanks to that, Venus began to reveal itself, not as a sister to Earth, but as a world scarred by fire. Before we dive into the next part, quick question. Want to help us reach our first 1,000 subscribers? Just hit that subscribe button, it really helps. To truly see Venus, we had to look with something other than eyes. In the 1970s and 80s, NASA's Pioneer Venus mission and the Soviet Venner orbiters began scanning the planet with radar a method that sends radio waves through the thick clouds and listens for echoes from the surface. But it wasn't until 1989, with the launch of Magellan, that we finally got a high-resolution view of Venus's face. Magellan orbited Venus for four years, mapping over 98% of its surface using radar imaging. What it revealed was a planet shaped not by water or wind, but by intense volcanic and tectonic forces. The entire surface appeared young, only a few hundred million years old, suggesting Venus had been completely resurfaced by volcanic activity. Massive structures called coronae, oval-shaped geological scars, dominate the terrain. Venus has no Earth-like plate tectonics, but it has pancake domes, shield volcanoes, and lava plains that stretch for thousands of kilometers. One volcano, Mat Mons, towers over eight kilometers high. In more recent years, Japan's Akatsuki probe added ultraviolet imaging to the toolkit. By tracking cloud patterns and UV light, it revealed Venus's bizarre atmospheric behavior, like super-rotating winds that whip around the planet in just four Earth days. These new eyes gave us a map of Venus, but not a complete picture. To know what it's like on the ground, we had to go even further. Enter the only space missions to ever send back actual photographs from Venus's surface. In the brutal environment of Venus, landing isn't just difficult, it's deadly. Temperatures soar to over 460 degrees Celsius, 860 degrees Fahrenheit, and the atmospheric pressure is equivalent to being 900 meters underwater. Most spacecraft would be crushed or melted within minutes. But in the 1970s and early 80s, the Soviet Union pulled off the impossible. Their Venera program sent a series of probes to Venus, and four of them, Venera 9, 10, 13, and 14, managed to survive long enough to send back images from the surface. These are the only actual photographs humans have ever received from Venus's ground. Venera 13, in particular, gave us the clearest glimpse. After a fiery descent, it landed in 1982 and operated for about 127 minutes. The photos it sent showed a cracked, desolate landscape littered with flat rocks and fine dust. The surface looked orange due to the filtering effect of Venus's thick atmosphere. No plants, no water, no movement, just silence and stone, beneath a sky the color of rust. The lander also carried microphones, 
While most of the data was static, it did capture eerie, low-frequency rumblings. Perhaps the wind, perhaps distant thunder. It was the first time we heard another planet's surface. What the Venera lander showed us was more than just rocks. They showed us reality. Venus wasn't an ocean world or a steamy jungle. It was an oven with a rocky floor, a graveyard for spacecraft. And yet, it was beautiful in its own alien way. Thanks to these brave little machines, we saw what no telescope or radar could fully reveal. The scorched, silent plains of a planet once thought to be Earth's twin. Venus isn't just hot, it's volcanic to its very core. When scientists analyzed the radar maps from Magellan, they realized something shocking. Almost the entire surface of Venus appears shaped by volcanic activity. Over 80% of the terrain is covered by smooth, solidified lava. But it's not just flat plains, we're talking about thousands of volcanoes. Some are small, barely noticeable. Others are enormous. The planet is home to massive shield volcanoes like Sif Monsan Mat Mons, towering several kilometers high. These structures resemble Earth's Hawaiian volcanoes, but exist in far greater numbers. In fact, Venus might have more volcanoes than any other planet in the solar system. One of the most intriguing features is the Pancake Dome, a wide, flat structure formed by thick, sticky lava that oozes out slowly before cooling. These domes can be dozens of kilometers across, creating a landscape unlike anything we see on Earth. Then there are coronas, huge crown-like formations caused by hot material bubbling up beneath the crust. They can stretch for hundreds of kilometers, warping the terrain into ripples and fractures. It's like the planet is blistering from the inside out. For years, scientists debated whether these volcanoes were active or relics of the past. But in 2023, new analysis of old Magellan images revealed something groundbreaking. Changes in surface features around Mat Mons suggested fresh lava flows. Venus, it turns out, might still be erupting today. That changes everything. If Venus is volcanically active, it means the planet is geologically alive, and that opens up new questions about its atmosphere, its evolution, and even its potential for past habitability. What's clear is this, Venus is not a static, dead rock. Beneath its crushing sky and acidic clouds, it's a dynamic world, still being shaped by fire and pressure. In short, Venus has a heartbeat, and it pulses with lava. If there's a place in the solar system that truly earns the title of hell, it's Venus. Start with the temperature, a blistering 460 degrees Celsius, 860 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt lead, soften aluminum, and incinerate nearly any probe we send. This isn't because Venus is closer to the sun, it's because of a runaway greenhouse effect. The planet's thick atmosphere, made up of over 96% carbon dioxide, traps heat with brutal efficiency. Sunlight gets in, but the heat can't escape. Over millions of years, that turned Venus from a potentially Earth-like planet into a pressure-cooked furnace. And speaking of pressure, Venus's surface experience is around 90 times the atmospheric pressure of Earth. It's like being nearly one kilometer, 0.6 miles, underwater. This immense pressure crushes spacecraft unless they're built like mini submarines. As if that weren't enough, the clouds overhead are made of sulfuric acid. Winds in the upper atmosphere race around the planet at over 300 kilometers per hour, 186 miles per hour. Lightning crackles through the skies. It's toxic, it's violent, it's deadly. And yet, the planet still lures us in. There's something haunting about its landscape, about the fact that this scorched, ruined world is so similar in size and shape to Earth. It's as if Venus shows us an alternate future, a version of our planet gone wrong. It's a powerful reminder, beauty in the sky doesn't always mean beauty up close. Before we truly understood Venus, imagination filled in the blanks, and often got it wrong. In the early 20th century, many scientists believed Venus might be a lush, tropical planet. The constant cloud cover led some to think it was warm and wet, possibly covered in oceans or rainforests. Science fiction writers ran with the idea, imagining alien swamps, amphibious creatures, and steamy civilizations beneath the clouds. But the reality is harsher than anyone guessed. Venus isn't tropical. It's scorched. It doesn't rain water. It rains acid, although the heat evaporates it before it hits the ground. There are no oceans, no forests, no signs of life just a volcanic desert trapped beneath crushing air and choking gas. What was once envisioned as a paradise turned out to be one of the most hostile places we've ever studied. And that twist from dream to nightmare is part of what makes Venus so fascinating. 
Venus might seem like a dead end, a scorched world we'll never walk on. But studying it is more important than ever. Why? Because Venus is a warning. It's the best natural example we have of what happens when a planet's atmosphere spirals out of control. The same greenhouse gases that warm Earth to livable temperatures pushed Venus into a runaway feedback loop, turning it into a furnace. Understanding how and why that happened could help us avoid a similar fate here at home. Venus also holds clues about planetary evolution. It's nearly the same size and mass as Earth, yet it turned out so differently. Studying those differences teaches us about our own planet and about the potential habitability of planets beyond our solar system. With upcoming missions like NASA's Veritas and Europe's Envision, we're about to get even closer to the truth and every answer brings a new question. Venus shines like a jewel in our sky, bright, constant, and beautiful. But now we know what lies beneath that glow, and it's not a sister Earth. It's a warning wrapped in fire. The surface is a furnace, the sky rains acid. Volcanoes may still erupt under a crushing, toxic atmosphere. And yet, this planet tells a story we need to hear about climate, about change, and about how fragile a world can be. Venus reminds us that appearances can lie. What looks like a pearl in the heavens might just be a planet on fire. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more.